All right, so I normally show procedural uh, videos on my on my YouTube channel, but today I'm going to show a basic uh, thing that needs to be done to a lathe. Now, when I got this lathe, I was uh, under the gun. I had parts to make, so I never really did the setup procedures that you would normally do when you buy a lathe. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of things that are involved, but one of the main things is getting this cross slide the X and Y axis to where you're not getting any yaw movement out of this when the when the cutter works its way across the piece. So you would think, you know, most people, if, if you're new to a lathe, you would think, oh yeah, that's going to be just, you know, everything's going to be fine. But no, everything on a lathe is adjustable and it does need to be dialed in so that you have accuracy of cut. You're not having the the cutting head chatter across the workpiece you know there's just a lot of things that have to be done and another thing that has to be done at some point and it's not a real priority right now is the tailstock is actually not in true alignment with the center axis of the lathe head so in other words if you if you shot a laser through this a straight laser right through the middle of where this lathe head is it would not hit the exact center of this. It would it would hit either above or below or to the right or the left side. So it's not true. Unfortunately, the tailstock on these little on these cheap little lays, you know, these little hobby lays, uh, are not adjustable. So I'm gonna have to create something that's gonna enable me to adjust that to where I can get a true saddle bore. If I wanted to rifle bore something, you know, like bore from start to finish through a three-piece, you know, a three-foot piece of stock exactly straight I'd have the ability to do that not that I'd have the ability to do that with the space that I have on this lathe but you know that's just kind of my my example of what I should be able to do once it's true so the cross slides okay now one of the ways of checking the cross slides normally you would get a, a dial indicator you'd put it here you'd see how much movement you have you know yaw and that's great and everything but it, it should be fairly obvious from the start if you have movement by moving the piece as far forward as it can go, backing it off about a half a turn, and then just seeing if you've got any movement. You can hear a little bit of movement there, okay? Now, go to the other end, and you can kind of see where it's going off the slide. Another indicator is I can feel that it's easier to turn here, so I know I have more play on this end than I do on the other end. And it moves quite a bit. So that's why sometimes this workpiece is, is catching on the work itself. And I cut brass. So brass is very soft, you know, but it's still moving this. If I was cutting steel, I'd never get away with that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cross slide off of this. And I'm going to adjust. I'm going to see where the adjustment is on the bottom of this slide. On this side versus this side. And I'm going to go... I'm going to adjust it to where it's correct, where, where the adjustment that's here applies all the way across. That way I know it's a good starting point for me. I don't want to have to be fudging back and forth right now because I've got stuff to do, but the basic stuff is to get this to where it's within tolerance, to where it's not going to move an unbearable amount. And, you know, I think I can probably get it to where it's going to be correct once I do that part of it. And the other, the other part is, is that as you can see, this guide here, okay, this is this is the part where this piece is going to be, if, if you're cutting along the axis of this, okay, and this is actually extended out over the axis, if you're cutting along the axis of this, then you're better off cutting there than cutting an ex, you know extended way out here because this piece is going to want to move more. It's going to be easier for the lathe, the movement, of the lathe, of the cutting motion of the lathe to move that piece. So kind of a, a couple of things to watch out for if you're new new to a lathe. And I did get a, uh, you know, an upgraded, I got some upgraded pieces for the lathe. So let me take this off here. And again, you can hear the difference, okay? And it's obvious, the way this, this, this turns, it's obvious that it's looser on this end than it is on the other end. So I'll come back on camera once I've got this dissected and show you what's underneath. Now, I'm going to do the X slide and the Y slide, or the 
X side and the Y side. I, I always get these confused. Anyway, I'll be back on camera. Oh yes, and I did want to show you exactly what I would be adjusting. Okay, so as you can see, there's a channel here, okay, that goes along this slide. And there is there are pieces here that go under the channel. Well, it turns out that this side here, this little piece here, is adjustable. And the way that it's adjusted is these three turn screws right here adjust how far in that piece right there extends under this slide. Okay, so once I get it out, it'll be you know more apparent. Uh, well, here let me see if I can see if I can remove it. Okay, so as you can see, the slide has this piece, and this is the adjustable side here. I want to make it to where this is even all the way along this axis, and the same with the other axis, but I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to shoot one axis, just in the interest of time for this video, and that's, what's, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll bring it over to my work table and start on it. Now, this is usually a hit and miss procedure, so it does take a couple swings at it to get it right, okay? But, you know, I just know from experience, I've been using this lathe long enough, that this part of the axis, this right here, is actually the right width for that slide. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, and as you can see, there's more of a gap here than there is up here. And just to show you, this piece actually comes out. This side is solid, and then this piece comes out. So it actually, you know, it comes out. Just like that. And then there's three little, you know, three little holes where the, where the screws are here, where the adjustment screws are, okay? Now, the way the screws are is there is a, there's a hex, this portion of the screw right here, I don't know if I can show it, has a hex, hole in it and then there's the nut that goes on the outside part of the screw so what you have to do the the nut tightens this nut right here tightens down the screw you know to where it doesn't move and then the hex portion is what you adjust in and out so that'll give the in and out adjustment of uh of that axis I'm trying to get it to zoom back okay so I'm going to grab my little T-bars. So that's what I'm going to be adjusting. I'm going to be adjusting it so that this portion here is the same exact distance. The distance here is the same as this distance here. And another thing I've noticed here too is that it looks like uh, there's a, it looks like they've radius this off a little bit. Uh, probably to make it easier to slide on and off of the, of the axis there on the machine itself so that that's another factor to where if you have this thing backed off far enough you're not going to have once you get past this point here you're not going to have the true width of the uh, material working for you okay so let me grab one of my uh, I'll turn, turn off the camera and come back on once I'm ready to roll all right so now I'm just going to measure across here Okay, so since this is the tight part of the axis, this is the part that I'm going to judge the rest by. It should be performing. Now, I'm trying to get off the end here because of this taper, okay? So, I'm going to stick this in here. And it looks like it's about... Uh, it looks like it's uh, 1.065. So, that's what I'm going to judge it by, okay? So now I'm going to grab, now I'm going to get this side to be the same. Yeah, we're way looser here. So it looks like this is about 1.076. I'm not sitting with my head above. Yeah, 1.076. So I'm going to turn that screw in a little bit. Not going to take much really, probably about maybe a quarter turn, maybe a little bit more. 
and now we're at, uh, oh, it's I've over adjusted. It's 1.049, so I got to get it a little bit less adjusted here. Go to about there. It's going to take some doing. It, the hardware on this thing is not as fine as what you would have on a full size lathe. 1.055. And looks like 1.065. Forgot what this was here. Yeah, 1.06, 1.0. Well, it moved it this side in a little bit, so I'm gonna make it to where this side's in a little bit more, because obviously this moving moves that out a little bit. So I'm gonna move that to 065, because I know that that was a pretty good starting point measurement. Whoops. I just moved it. Okay. No, I keep moving it here. Okay, so I'm going to have to hold it down. It's actually uh, 1.051. Let me make sure. Uh, you got to hold this bar down because there's nothing to push it there. And this side here is 1.062. Three, so I'm, I'm going to move it in a little bit more again. Probably about there. Well, let me just do it while the dial's on here. It's kind of hard to be three-handed about this. Okay, so now I've got 1.053, which is about right. One point oh five three. The trick is to get it to where... Yeah, this one's about 05, whoops, this one's about 052-ish. So the trick is to get it to where it's going to slide across this, and it's not going to bind to where this, where this scale is not going to be able to move. Because if it's too tight, you'll keep twisting it, and what will happen is the, uh, the turn screw will release this lever, and it actually won't be moving. It'll bind on there. So that's the trick to get it as tight as you can without that binding. So now I'm going to do the middle one. I'm just going to do that one by hand because I know that our setting is right. And then I'm going to tighten down those screws. I'm going to put it back on there. I'm going to check it and then I'm going to uh, see what it actually ended up being. And this time, oh yes. And I always use white grease on this, on the slides, because you don't want it to bind. So I'll get it back on there and we'll see what we got after this. Okay, so now I've got it to where the rail is fairly straight. So I've got these nuts loose on here. So now I'm going to, I need to twist them in a little bit because I still got a little bit of yaw. You can hear that, okay. So I'm going to twist them in probably a sixteenth or an eighth of a turn. feels fairly, that might be a little bit too tight. I've got this in the middle here, by the way, so that I'm pinching the rail evenly. With the middle adjustment, I just snug it up. With the other two, I feels like it's a little bit too tight. But it actually drags through okay. Yeah, it's 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 actually well no. I need to loosen it up just ever so slightly. So let me get it back in the middle here. Just a slight bit here. Just slightly. Should have done this one first. It's the it's the front one and the back one that really count. Notice that they are capturing the rail here, so I can feel it rocking a little bit. But once I tighten those down, it's probably going to tighten that down a little bit. So let me, uh, well, I'm going to tighten it and I'm going to come back on camera once it's tightened. Okay, so now I've got the dial indicator on it, okay? 
So the inside, this, the, with the slide as far this way as it can go, without it being off the rails here, I've got, uh, looks like it's about four tenths. And then I'm just going to slide it in here. See how much yaw it has at either end. Back it off a half a turn. And again, you know, about four, four or five tenths. So I would call that good. It was, uh, it's a lot better than it was. It was probably at about eight or nine tenths before. And uh, I've got this, this rail actually moves pretty easily. I might get it in a little bit more, but I think if I get in a little bit more, it's going to bind too much. And then this scale is not going to move because it's going to be too tight for that screw. So that's I'm going to give it a run, see how it is with that, and then uh, call it a day. But that's how you do the adjustments. Now you do it on this slide and on that slide because both have adjustments. So thanks for watching the video, and I hope you learned a little bit something about setting up a, a lathe. Thank you. Yes, I did want to add another footnote to that video. Okay, so, you know, you saw me uh, do the cross slide here to where it's adjusted within five tenths, okay, five ten thousandths. And I, I did that adjustment as well, just so you'll know. But it's not just that that affects how that tool moves when it gets to the workpiece. Now, most of what I work on is brass, okay? So it's a pretty soft material. If I was working on steel, that'd be... Uh, it'd, I would have had to do this a long time ago because it would have been a much more dramatic cut, even though I would have probably only been cutting maybe two tenths at a time. So the, the angle of attack, okay, where the tool is located on the cross slide, okay, in this, in this case the x-axis, okay, I don't ever try to get it to where that tool is much extended on this side beyond the end of it. I try to always get it to where this is, you know, that's as far deep as this cut's going to go. Maybe a little bit more, okay? The angle of the cut, you know, the angle of attack, okay? And how far the stock is from the actual vise, okay, from the head. Because if you have this way out here, obviously you're going to have some flex here, okay? Uh, the, how far the tool is extended out from the end of this, that also affects it. If you have it extended out to here, you're going to have more leverage, and thus that tool is going to move more during the cutting process. So there's a lot of things that come into play when it comes to analyzing, you know, problems with chatter and, and tool, you know, even the tool being misshapen, if this tool's dull or whatever, you know, so many different factors. But the getting the, the cross slides correct from the start is the most basic adjustment that you can make and it's where you start to get the lathe to be tuned to where you're you know to your level of performance that you want to have so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching